Hi guys, today I'm gonna to talk about uh, one of the first MSI standalone cases, the MPG Gungnir 100 that I have right here. Now the name Gungnir has a really weird ring to it, uh, but it's supposed to come from Norse mythology and it's supposed to be Odin's spear, so it's kinda cool. Now, you can get different versions of this case, you can get a completely black one that will cost you 80 euros, you can get one with a red uh, MSI signature dragon on the front panel that will cost you 90 euros, and you can get a version like this with RGB that you will have to set aside 110 euros for. Now, uh, the prices were a bit higher initially, now they went down, so I think that's great because I do think they're reasonable, but now, what's important, let's see what this case offers for that price. Let's go. This video is brought to you by Corsair's new Dominator Platinum RGB memory. With their high speeds, beautifully crafted aluminum heat spreaders and innovative RGB technology, these modules take RGB memory to the next level. Get yours using the links in the description below. The design of this case is pretty toned down and elegant and I have to say not something I expected to see from MSI as they usually have very gamey designs. The chassis is made of metal, front and the top panel are plastic, the left side panel is tinted tempered glass while the right side panel is also made of metal. The front panel has that angle design that gives this case its characteristic look, but I wouldn't really call it unique as we've seen it before, especially on Silverstone Raven cases a few years back. Both top and the front panel have openings on each side for airflow that are covered with a thin mesh dust filters. There's also a dust filter on the bottom of the case that is easily removable, though you have to pull it out from the back side of the case, so moving the whole case to reach it might be necessary. The front IO panel has a power button, two USB 3 type A connections, two audio connections, as well as an LED controller. Right under the IO panel, we have addressable RGB details, as well as on the bottom of the case. You can control this detail via the Mystic Light app, or just use the controller on the IO panel that has a huge number of presets available. The overall quality of the case is quite decent. Even though the base is pretty sturdy, I do have to say that the plastic of the panels feels a bit thin. That being said, the finish is quite good with no gaps or inconsistencies. Inside of the case is pretty standard. There's a PSU cover on the bottom, quite a few grommets around the motherboard for cable management, and four 120mm fans that case comes with. Three are in the front, and one in the back that is actually an addressable RGB fan. The inside of this mid-tower case is pretty spacious, as you would suspect. It can easily fit an extended ATX motherboard, CPU coolers up to 170mm in height, and GPUs up to 400mm in length, and a range of radiator sizes up to 420 millimeters in the front and 280 millimeters in the top of the case. On the back we see a metal cover that you can use if you want. I personally didn't put it back after building the system as the velcro strips underneath are quite enough to hold the cables in place and you cannot really see the cover through a closed panel. There is a decent amount of space for cables for a normal build, but it might get a bit tight if you do use cable extensions. In the top left corner we find an RGB hub with 8 spots total for addressable RGB accessories. Three are used for the fan in the back and two front panel details, but having five more spots is a very nice amount. That being said, I do think it's a bit of a bummer that a case that comes with four fans doesn't have a fan hub nor a fan splitter cable of any kind. The case fits a full-size ATX power supply, and when it comes to storage, it fits uh, two 2.5-inch drives on the PSU cover, two more in the back, and there is a drive cage in the bottom that can fit either two 3.5 or two 2.5-inch drives. And that's a very nice amount of storage, actually. Overall, the case has almost everything you would expect to see in an ATX case, though again, I do think a fan controller could have been included. Let's talk about the system that I have here. So for the CPU, I have AMD Ryzen 2600X, uh, that is in an MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard, which is great, it's affordable and it performs well. Uh, for the CPU cooler, I have Cooler Master Hyper 212 Black Edition. Uh, I have 16 gigabytes of memory. These are Corsair LPX modules. For the GPU, I have MSI RTX 2070 Gaming Z. Now, for the power supply, I have a uh, Focus uh, Plus Gold 650 Watt, I think, from Sezonic. And uh, for the storage, I have a Samsung 960 EVO 500 gigabyte uh, M.2 NVMe SSD. Now, this is a um, 
mid-high-end system that you would expect to see in a case like uh, this. In high side, I probably should have used a motherboard that has an addressable RGB header. This one doesn't, uh, which is great because then you can actually sync your case to some of your other products or just be able to use a Mystic Lite app. This way you just have to rely on the uh, RGB controller that the case comes with, but that's okay because it has gazillion modes to choose from. Let's see the performance of this case. Starting in idle, I mostly want to make sure the case is able to run nice and quiet. 36 decibels at 50 centimeters distance isn't completely inaudible, but it is quiet while temperatures remain nice and low in our 23 degree ambient. While gaming, uh, I use the Assassin's Creed Odyssey since it's also fairly CPU heavy, and we see the semi-side case holding really well actually. CPU and GPU temperatures are comfortable and 37.7 decibels at 50 centimeters distance is still pretty quiet. While running Blender, the CPU did warm up a bit more and the CPU cooler gets a tiny bit louder, but again, the case did a great job at keeping everything plenty cool. So overall, like for a case that actually has such a closed front, this case is performing surprisingly well with this current system in it. So I do believe even if you use a higher end system, it should do just fine. When it comes to build quality, it does feel a bit uh, plastic, uh, but it's actually quite sturdy and the finish of the case is quite good. Now you do see there is a bit Spartan here and there, or what would be analogy for Norse mythology? But it's a bit Viking-y when it comes to uh, the build of this case, but it's actually packed of features. So you have uh, four fans that come with it, you have uh, uh, LED hub, an LED controller that has a million different modes to choose from. You get a lot of the storage space and you get just a lot of features that fit this price segment. Now, there's a lot of cases to choose from that cost one, around 110 euros and there is no such thing as one case winning the segment, but this case is actually competing really well with the others. So if you do like the design and you, your eyes set on this case, there's absolutely no reason not to go for it. Now, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about uh, this uh, case and about this review. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye!